We begin near the top of page 226, right around line 515. And what that threat he let my ram and with that threat he let my ram go free outside. But soon as we'd got one foot past cave and courtyard, first I loosed myself from the ram, then loosed my men, then quickly, glancing back again and again, we drove our flock, good plump beast with their long shanks, straight to the ship, and a welcome sight we were to loyal comrades, we who'd escaped our deaths, but for all the rest they broke down and wailed. I cut it short, I stopped each shipmate's cries, my head tossing, brows frowning, silent signals to hurry, tumble our fleecy herd on board, launch out on the open sea. They swung aboard, they set to their oars in ranks, and in rhythm churned the water white with stroke on stroke. But once offshore, as far as a man's shout can carry, I called back to the cyclops, stinging taunts. So, Cyclops, no reek coward it was whose crew you bent to devour there in your vaulted cave. You with your brute force, your filthy crimes came down on your own head, you shameless cannibal, daring to eat your guests in your own house. So Zeus and the other gods have paid you back. That made the rage of the monster boil over. Ripping off the peak of a towering crag, he heaved it so hard, the boulder landed just in front of our dark prow, and a huge swell reared up as the rock went plunging under, a tidal wave from the open sea. The sudden backwash drove us landward again, forcing us close inshore, but grabbing a long pole, I thrust us off and away, tossing my head for dear life, signaling crews to put their backs in the oars, escape grim death. They threw themselves in the labor, rode on fast, but once we'd plowed the breakers twice as far, again I began to taunt the cyclops, men around me trying to check me, calm me, left and right. So headstrong, why? Why rile the beast again? The rock he flung in the sea just now, hurling our ship to shore once more, we thought we'd die on the spot. If he caught a sound from one of us, just a moan, he would have crushed our heads with ship timbers with one heave of another flashing jagged rock. Good God, the brute can throw. So they begged, but they could not bring my fighting spirit round. I called back another burst of anger. Cyclops, if any man on the face of the earth should ask you who blinded you, shamed you so, say Odysseus, raider of cities, he gouged out your eye, Laertes' son who makes his home in Ithaca. So I vaunted, and Greek groaned back in answer, Oh, no, no, that prophecy years ago, it all comes home to me with a vengeance now. We once had a prophet here, a great tall man, Telemus, Eurymus' son, master of reading signs, who grew old in his trade among his fellow cyclops. All this he warned me he would come to pass some day, that I'd be blinded here at the hands of one Odysseus, but I always look for a handsome giant man to cross my path. Not some fighter clad in power like armor plate, but now, look what a dwarf, a spineless good-for-nothing, stuns me with wine, then gouges out my eye. Come here, Odysseus, let me give you a guest gift and urge Poseidon the earthquake god to speed you home. I am his son, and he claims to be my father, true, and he will, he himself will heal me if he pleases. No other blessed God, no man can do the work. Heal you? Here was my parting shot. Would to God I could strip you of life and breath and ship you down to the house of death as surely as no one will ever heal your eye, not even the earthquake God himself. But at that he bellowed out to Lord Poseidon, thrusting his arms to the starry skies and prayed, Hear me, Poseidon, god of the sea-blue main who rocks the earth. If I really am your son and you claim to be my father, come, grant that Odysseus, raider of cities, Laertes' son who makes his home in Ithaca, never reaches home or if he's fated to see his people once again, and reach his well-built house and his own native country, let him come home late and come a broken man, all shipmates lost, 
alone in a stranger's ship and let him find a world of pain at home. So he prayed, and the god of the sea-blue main, Poseidon, heard his prayer. The monster suddenly hoisted a boulder, far larger, wheeled and heaved it, putting his weight behind it, massive strength, and the boulder crashed close, landing just in the wake of our dark stern, just failing to graze the rudder's bladed edge. A huge swell reared up as the rock went plunging under. Yes, and the tidal breaker drove us out to our island's far shore, where all my well-docked ships, deck ships, lay moored, clustered, waiting, and huddled round them. Crewmen sat in anguish, waiting, chafing for our return. We beached our vessel hard ashore on the sand. We swung out in the frothing surf ourselves, and herding Cyclops' sheep from our deep holds, we shared them round so no one, not on my account, would go deprived of his fair share of spoils. But the splendid ram, as we meted out the flocks, my friends in arms made him my prize of honor, mine alone, and I slaughtered him on the beach and burnt his thighs to Cronus' mighty son, Zeus of the thundercloud who rules the world. But my sacrifices failed to move the god. Zeus was still obsessed with plans to destroy my entire oar-swept fleet and loyal crew of comrades. Now all day long, till sun went down, we sat and feasted on sides of meat and heady wine. Then when the sun had set and night came on, we lay down and slept at the water's shelving edge. When young dawn, with her rose-red fingers, shone once more, I roused the men straight away, ordering all crews to man the ships and cast off cables quickly. They swung aboard at once. They sat to the, to the oars in ranks, and in rhythm churned the water white with stroke on stroke. And from there we sailed on, glad to escape our death, yet sick at heart for the comrades we had lost. Now that we've finished Book 9, we're going to answer one more question before continuing the rest of the activities of the lesson. <laughs> 